Now, we have understood that for the op amp to have a virtual short property, the op amp has to be in a negative feedback. Okay. Now, even with real op amps, when the op amps gain is finite, it is only if you have negative feedback that the difference voltage between its inputs converges to a small value. With ideal op amps, it converges to 0. In either case, whether you have a finite gain or an infinite gain, if the op amp is in positive feedback, the difference diverges off to infinity. Okay. So, now it turns out that there is a very easy algorithm that you can use to check whether the op amp is in negative feedback or positive feedback or if you come up with some circuit based on the virtual short concept, you can do that without assigning any signs to the op amp inputs, but after that work out which way the signs must be for the op amp to be in negative feedback. Okay. Okay. For this, uh, what I will do is first show you what the algorithm is and then apply it to an op amp circuit. In fact, so far we know only one op amp circuit, I will apply it to that one. Okay. So, let us consider the op amp and let me label the terminals A and B instead of plus and minus. Okay. and let us say the circuit has a number of inputs. Okay. I will show two inputs and there could be any number of them and this is embedded in some circuit. This is the op amp for which we are trying to find the sign, so that it is a negative feedback and of course, we will assume that the rest of it is a linear circuit. Okay. So, this is the output of the op amp and this is the difference V A B of the op amp. Okay. So, now feedback refers to what fraction of the op amp's output comes to its own input and that is what we have to determine. Okay. So, to do that Let me do the following. I will remove the op amp. Okay. So, this was terminal A, this is terminal B. Like I said, we have to find out what fraction of uh, a voltage applied here comes back to its inputs. Okay. And let me apply some V test where the op amp's output was. Okay. So, this is the first step. So, if you look at the original circuit, the op amp's output is here. Now, what I did was I removed the op amp and wherever the op amp's output was, I now drive it with some test voltage V test. Okay. Now, what is this V A B going to be? This V A B, given what we know about linear circuits, it will be a linear combination of all the sources in the circuit all the independent sources. Now, this circuit which is shown by this some odd shaped box, this is a linear circuit. So, there are no independent sources inside. Okay. All the independent sources are shown outside. I have shown a case with 2, but you can generalize it to any number. So, this V A B will be some alpha times V test plus some beta times V 1 plus some gamma times I 2 and if you have more sources, the linear combination will continue. Now, as far as uh, the op amp being in negative feedback is concerned, we have to only look at this particular number alpha that is 
what fraction of the op amp comes back to its input that is what is meant by feedback right it has nothing to do with what part of v1 appears at uh, vab and what part of i2 appears at vab and so on it's only what part of op amp's own output comes back to its input so alpha is the proportionality constant between the output of the op amp and the input of the op amp and that's our only concern okay we don't need to worry about this now because we don't need to worry about this and the circuit is linear which means superposition holds this alpha is not affected by the values of v1 and i2 okay so for instance one way to analyze this uh, whole thing would be i first set v1 and i2 to 0 see the effect of uh, v test then set v test and i2 to 0 see the effect of v1 and finally set v test and v1 to 0 see the effect of i2 okay now i am not interested in the contributions from v1 and i2 so i may as well set v1 and i2 to 0 okay so i set all independent sources except v test of course to 0 because i am not interested in this whole function i am only interested in this value alpha so what do i do in this case i have v1 and i set v1 equal to 0 which means i replace it with a short circuit i set i2 equal to 0 which means i replace it with an open circuit okay so after doing this obviously this vab will be just alpha times v test right because v1 is 0 i2 is 0 and if i have more independent sources i'll set them also to 0 okay so all i have to do is linear circuit analysis with a single source v test and usually that is quite easy okay now all i need to do to find out if the op amp is a negative feedback or to assign the signs of the op amp is to look at the sign of alpha okay i have replaced the voltage source v1 with a short circuit current source i2 with an open circuit i analyze the circuit with only v test stimulating it and i find that vab is alpha times v test okay now for negative feedback around the op amp what i need to do is the following if alpha is more than 0 then i should assign a to the negative terminal and b to the positive terminal okay because in that case this is how the op amp is and i say that a is the negative terminal and b is the positive terminal okay and this is v a b now v a b is some positive number times v test i assumed alpha is greater than 0 okay the way we have assigned the signs of the op amp the difference input of the op amp is vd so vd is minus vab which is minus alpha times v test because alpha is positive i get some negative multiple of v test that means that whatever the op amp's output is it will get multiplied by some negative number and will get applied to the input of the op amp and that's the meaning of negative feedback okay so the input voltage the input difference voltage vd of the op amp must be some negative number times the output of the op amp that's when the op amp is in negative feedback if it is some positive number times the output of the op amp it will be in positive feedback okay so i hope this is clear and it will become clearer after i do the example now similarly if alpha is smaller than 0 then i have to assign a to the positive terminal and b to the negative terminal 
my final goal is to have the input difference voltage V d of the op amp to be some negative multiple of the output voltage of the op amp. Now, this voltage V test is a proxy for the output voltage of the op amp. Okay. So, to summarize, to determine the signs of the op amp for negative feedback these are the steps you remove the op amp and drive its output by an independent voltage source V test okay, and null all independent sources other than V test, then determine the input voltage V A B of the op amp and it will be of the form V A B is alpha V test, it will just be proportional to V test. If alpha is greater than 0, then A is the negative terminal of the op amp B is the positive terminal of the op amp. Instead, if alpha is smaller than 0, then A is the positive terminal of the op amp and B is the negative terminal of the op amp. Okay. Now, you can ask what happens if alpha happens to be 0? If alpha happens to be 0, that means that there is no feedback around the op amp at all. Remember, what is alpha? The input voltage of the op amp is alpha times V test and V test is a proxy for the output voltage of the op amp. If alpha equals 0, it means that no part of the output of the op amp is coming back to its input and this means that the op amp is not in feedback at all. Such a circuit cannot be used. Okay. So, this is how you determine the signs of the op amp for negative feedback. Okay.